Hey, hey, morning, morning. Happy day to you. I said it again, happy day. It's been a while, right? A whole hot 20 minutes <laughs> since my last live. Welcome to the Daily Dose. I'm gonna wait a moment or two to see if anybody joins us live. If you're catching this on the replay, welcome to you. Good morning to you or afternoon, whenever you catch this. Maybe you're off and running or already doing your things that you need to do for the day. Uh, regardless of your circumstances right now, but welcome, welcome to you. We'll hang out for a moment in the backyard. Went from the beach to the backyard. This is my home office right now. Kids are kind of up and getting it up. My wife's actually, she's at work right now and uh, works in healthcare, by the way. And so do pray for her as she heads into work to do work, right? And uh, I'm going to jump on here and talk to you today, well actually not going to jump, I'm already on here, and talk to you about what drives you. So when you come on, I'd love to hear you. Welcome, 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 good morning, good morning to you. We'll hang out a moment or two to see who joins us. I think it takes a, a moment or two for people to jump on. Uh, and if you're catching this, you can just scroll forward if you're watching the replay. Good morning, let me know that you're here. I see some eyes watching right now. Welcome to you, good morning to you. Coach Mark here, if you want to call me Coach Mark, or you can call me Mark, or you can call me the ball guy with the big vein on the side of his head, you can call me the guy, the daily dose guy, whatever you want to call me. Um, just be nice. <laughs> now, in fact, I actually just had to remove somebody. The one thing I know I'm doing, doing good things. This is, I would say this, if you do any kind of social media or any kind of um, influencing, if you will, whatever you want to call, if you're, if you have an online presence, uh, regardless of how big or small, <laughs> you know, you're doing good things when you, when you have people start hating on you. And again, it just kind of <laughs> makes you, the reality is there's always going to be some people hating on you. If you're living by that, it's not going to drive you very far, but I had to remove somebody talking about, you know, I actually just asked as far as if there was just one thing that you could do today that you haven't been able to do because of the quarantine, what would it be? And actually, while I'm waiting for a couple of you to come on here, I'm just going to go through, of course, the gym is one, going outside and go to a restaurant. That's another one. Jeff mentioned that. Walk on the beach with uh, and work work on my tan. Yeah, that's, that's true. Although some beaches have kind of limited access. Uh, free to roam on Halloween, right? That That's definitely down the road, but hopefully we'll be able to do that. Go to church, absolutely. Definitely miss. There's there's obviously a great presence online with um, all kinds of businesses, churches included, and uh, but it isn't as quite the same as being a per person and being able to worship with them. Gather with friends and share a meal or beverage. Anyway, if you're just coming on, welcome. Good morning. Welcome to The Daily Dose. Let me just, on a side note, The Daily Dose is... A daily show I'm doing live on Facebook. This is episode number 23. I've gone 23 days live. Uh, I'm gonna go indefinitely. I think over time I'm not gonna even say what episode it is, but for now we'll just we'll just count my record. We're on a streak of 23 days at 8 a.m. Welcome to my live. So what the daily dose is? Let's just give you kind of a little quick little background. Is a daily dose of encouragement to give you something maybe to give you a boost for the day, some encouragement for the day, whereas our minds can be filled with so many other thoughts, unencouraging things. You can start watching and watching and watching the news, reading and reading and reading about negativity and reading about all the the, the doom and gloom of everything. And, and while it's not to say you shouldn't be informed and concerned, I think this was actually well said, and I can't remember who said it, is that news is supposed to be looked at. We should look at the news, not watch the news like a television program. Again, that's not all of course, that's how they make their money. The longer they keep you on, they make more money off of you. So again, that's that's a great marketing tool, regardless of what it is that pulls you in. Um, and again, that news is polarizing too, because you're either on one side or the other. And my my job here is not to talk about politics. In fact, if you start saying stuff or being negative, I'm going to remove you. It's pretty much how it works. If you're on my Facebook and you do nothing but negativity and and voicing your opinion and then being angry, it's one thing to discuss, but to be angry about it. And I just I just <laughs> just remove you. That's pretty much simple because I don't want to waste the time that I have because my time is precious. If I'm going to spend time with you, if I'm going to spend time with my family, if I'm going to be spending time on Facebook, I'm not going to fill my space up here with negative thoughts. I'm not going to fill it with with angry and bitterness and, and doom and gloom and all that stuff. And again, you have that choice to do it as well, right? It's up to you what you choose to look at or don't look at. So anyway, we're going to talk about what drives you. Again, what drives you? Good morning, Deb. Good morning, Mike. Welcome on here. And uh, as I was just going through, I think it's pretty cool 
that there's lots of connections right now. I feel like I'm connected with some people that I've never connected before with and some that I'm reconnecting with, which is pretty cool. Um, friends that I haven't, haven't really um, bumped into or really talked to in a long time and the beauty and power of the internet allows us to do that, which I think is amazing. Um, so again, if there's one thing I would say for me, one thing I haven't been able to do because of the quarantine, that was the beach when they took that away. But now, as you saw, we were able to keep our distance and go on the beach. That was definitely, uh, I was jonesing for the beach, my little fix, because I do that every day. We take, I take the dog down there every single day. Um, it's partly why we live close to the beach. Surfing, again, same thing, but I was able to do that. And I would say as far as being able to probably worship with um uh, at our church that would be one of the things also going to a restaurant i think would be good gym i don't really care if i go to the gym or not M majority of time i work out at home i do go to the gym sometimes but that's not a big deal for me um what is for you you can also post in here and by the way on the on the side note with the daily dose it's not just for me to talk i would love if you had a question and you wanted to ask in fact you can ask me after you could send me a message say i'd love you know for you to share you know your insight or maybe your wisdom and it can be again i don't have a lot of wisdom but i've been on this earth 47 years and as far as the the expertise of my wisdom that's that sun coming up again like it did the other day i should have learned my lesson yesterday it was all rainy it was like thunder and lightning and now look at the backyard now it's beautiful we got some sunshine beautiful beautiful um so definitely different than yesterday if you didn't catch yesterday's daily dose which we talked about living for today uh and then dealing with storms in life and i'm gonna try to sneak down here while the sun goes up and uh what drive what drives you so i would love to know if you put down in the chat what drives you right now? I would love, is it, is it um, your, your, your responsibilities as a parent? Is it because you know if you don't, you're going to fall back into some depression? Or maybe if you don't keep active and busy, is that you get stagnant and stale and you start worrying too much? I would say for me, I like to keep busy, but I like to keep focused and I like to keep the busyness that I have very, very intentional. Partly, I feel there's an intentional part that God's given me as a gift to be able to provide encouragement. It's something that has been my drive really for my entire life. I almost feel like we're coming into this new this this new normal, if you will. Pastor, yesterday, uh, Sunday, I listened to his amazing, amazing message about not like getting back to normal. So I know maybe you thinking like get get my nails done and gym time and all those things getting back to, to normal. But the reality is we're not we're not going back to a normal like like do you want to because i feel i even mentioned this yesterday about going back to normal for some is not really a good spot like thinking about looking instead of going back to normal is maybe looking forward to the new normal and that could be the case is actually being excited and looking forward to what's to come and maybe that's you pursuing a healthier path hold on let me do this I'm gonna do this, which I think I saw. Oh, there we go. <laughs> that sun is just coming down on my head, and and while I don't mind the sun, I, don't, <laughs> I can't see, um, and that that's blinding me. Maybe the shine is blinding on you as well. Hey, good morning, Karen. Good morning, Rebecca. I appreciate you, Kim Coughlin. Good morning. Welcome, welcome. So I want to know what drives you, and, and I wanted to share with you why I say partly I feel like for this moment right now, my driving force of doing this, I've been encouraged and been driven by this my entire life. I'm just going to share with you literally like the nickel version of my drive. Again, it was something that if you don't believe that you're created on purpose and you have significance, I'm just here to tell you that not only were you put on this earth on purpose, but you are put on this earth for a purpose and you have significant significance. Does that make sense? Like something that drives you have to actually be able to take action and be able to take another step forward. And I just want to share really quick while I'm an online coach and I've mentioned this before that I've been helping people in their health and fitness journeys for it is kind of crazy to think, but for 25 years, and that doesn't mean I've been working out for 25 years. I mean, actually, I've actually been earning a living, earning money, making money, working in the health and fitness industry for the past 25 years. It started out, let me just share with you my desire to become a physical therapist. Now, I did this, um, this was back in high school, and uh, my desire was to become a physical therapist. And in a nutshell, I went to school, and actually, to be honest with you, that was a, a hard challenge. It took me eight years to get a four-year degree. And actually, I didn't even get the degree I wanted. I had to go back and do two more years to do it. So it, that's why it took me eight years. Failed out of college, not because I was a partier, because I found out I had a learning disability. But I'll tell you what, I was driven, and I didn't realize at that time that God was moving me in a, in a direction of purpose and significance. And I'm just grateful that I'm here right now, and I can share this with you. So that's 
started out from high school to college, eight years of college. I was working at the same time while I was going to school. I started working as a personal trainer. So I really like started to get my feet wet. That was back in 95, right? Like 95, like, and then uh, that turned into doing group fitness. And I, and I honestly, I had this vision of like doing group fitness and teaching spinning. So I started that. I taught spinning for 10 years. Uh, and then from there, you know, I was I got inspired from from teaching spinning when I moved to New York. Actually, after I graduated, I moved to New York City, started working in an orthopedic hospital and I got experience in physical therapy. That was my degree at the time. Well, at the time, I, I say I went to school for eight years for physical therapy and I only worked in the, the industry uh, in the hospital setting for five. Honestly, couldn't couldn't even in the best hospital in the country for orthopedics. I just wasn't too keen on it being more about how much, and this is not to knock the hospital because all hospitals are run to make money. And that I totally get, um, you know, those are where they are profitable business. And I would say it was more about the business and how many patients you could see rather than the quality of care. And I just wasn't up for that. I had a different vision for my life and what I wanted to do and the drive to helping people and encouraging people turned from that into me moving more in the health and fitness industry. So I got certifications, I got credentialing, I did training, uh, I did pretty much the gold standards, the ACSMs and the, and that doesn't probably mean anything to you, but I literally, I took certification after after certification, I have a bookshelf filled with certifications. And again, that doesn't mean you're a good, it just means I, I was pursuing that. That was my driving force. I would say that's what was driving me, knowing that I could potentially help people before they have the need for <laughs> injuries. I'm going to just go with this here. You don't mind if I put my hand here. Let's do this. So that that turned into when I was in New York, I kind of started to, to move towards more of a fitness type of career. So when I moved to, we, my wife and I moved from from New York City, and we got married and moved here 18 years ago to <laughs> to uh, Jacksonville, and we were at that same time. Uh, I had a choice: do I want to go into physical therapy direction, or did I want to go more in the direction of fitness? And I just landed a job working as a personal trainer, and that really like stirred my drive even more. But then I realized while I was working with a whole bunch of golfers and that I actually even went and said, well, you know what, if I'm working with golfers, I might as well and do this to become the best golf fitness person that there is. So I went and pursued that and I started to do training. I spent thousands of dollars doing all the titleists. If you're a golfer, you've probably heard of TPI or Titles Performance Institute, went that direction for years. And then I wasn't passionate about it. So I found myself going in a different direction that wasn't driving me and that something was driving me more. And again, this is not for you to be impressed by me just to tell you that I didn't stay where I was at. I didn't stay stuck. I realized that my purpose was beyond where I was at. And maybe right now your purpose is way beyond where you're at right now. Maybe your purpose is beyond being stuck behind, you know, behind the TV watching Netflix. Maybe it's stuck in the job that you really hated for the last 10 years. And now you don't have it because they laid you off. And this could be the opportunity that you realize God's giving you to drive yourself to something better. Hold on a second. <laughs> Do something really quick. <laughs> you're coming with me here, by the way. Because that sun is just, it's like hot now too. All right, we're turning this on because I'm not done talking. All right, here we go. That's much better. You still with me? You better be still with me because I got something here powerful. I hope that you listen. All right, so now we're good to go. Look, we only have the, the, the LED lights in the back there. Good stuff. So back to that. So then from there, when I realized the golf wasn't my passion, and again, if you're not passionate, the cool thing is after the hospital, I've never worked for anybody. Well, I did that one small time when I moved here. But then I have been fortunate to pave my own path to find, you know, the what drives me and allow that to actually go and go with it. So one of the things, then I opened a gym. I had no idea back if you were to ask me, this is I opened in 2010, 2010. If you were to ask me in 2008, if you were to ask me in 2002, that you'd say like, um, Mark, you're going to own a gym and you're going to have like eight trainers and you're going to have 150 people that come through your doors and you're going to run a, a training studio. Uh, there's no way, no way. And then that's what happened. And the next thing you know, I, I have like this local gym and then it was my, there was a driving force be, behind there. And then I saw not just lives getting transformed physically, but I saw what was really cool. It coincided with my faith and actually walk with Jesus and actually having that relationship and learning about him. And then I saw people. People that were starting to transform people were actually bringing other people to church and it was amazing like it was amazing I know not everybody really probably enjoyed my my openness at least about my faith but it didn't matter God was moving and driving me in different ways so anyway but that turned into that being not 
the direction I had. Again, I was, it was at a moment, a crossroads. Then it was like the gym I had to sell, like we sold. And this is now like in 2015. So anyway, the point is, back to this, because I hope you're listening still and getting this, because it's really important. And I'm just going to say hello if you're watching. I hope you watch. And listen, on the side note, if you find this encouraging, I encourage you to come and watch me every single morning at 8 a.m. It's going to be 10 to 15 minutes. I tr promise I try to keep it under 15 minutes. Sometimes I think I went 30 minutes one time, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to let what's here and what God's telling me and sharing with me. Why now? I'm going to come back here. Now the sun's coming up. All right, there we go. We're good. We're good to go. Let's do this. <laughs> the sun is just bright. It's just shining light on me. And that's a, hopefully if you're in a dark place right now, maybe you need a little sunlight and I'm going to do this. We're just going to go handheld there. That's what I'm going. I'm just, going to freewheel it there so here we go so all these things that inspired me as far as taking action and driving you so what's driving you i would love to know even if you're just listening to this catch the beginning of it i want to know what's driving you right now what's your driving force is it like i said is it your family is it realizing that you want to be debt free is it relationship maybe you're pursuing a relationship that you want to take it to that next level you know and marriage whatever whether it's maybe thinking of a new direction now that you have this opportunity maybe your health Ooh, let's hold on there for a moment because that's my deal. That's my jam is that maybe you're at a, uh, a pivotal moment right now and there's a driving force that's really whispering. Maybe it's me whispering in your ear that this could be the perfect opportunity for you to start taking better care of your health regardless of what that is. So for me, just so you know where I'm at right now and the driving force and why I'm doing lives and why I'm trying to be as encouraging, it's not to sell you into my coaching program because to be honest with you, I would probably imagine a good percentage of you don't actually meet the requirements that are necessary to come into my coaching program because it is not the right fit for everyone. In fact, I make it pretty clear on a regular basis and I share that I work with moms and dads, busy moms and dads in my demographics in their 40s, ideally, typically in their 40s and 50s who are struggling to lose weight, who have 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 80 pounds of weight to lose and they're tired of doing it with impossible diets and long workouts and my program is designed about and built around, honestly, the 25 years of just in a nutshell what I shared with you, all of that experience working with thousands and thousands of people over the 25 years and I've built a program that's custom designed specifically for, like I said, those moms and dads. Now you might be in your 20s and you might be stuck and so forth and you might need to lose 10 pounds but I'm probably not the best fit for you. I'm really looking just for people people who want to be driven to their next level when it comes to their health and fitness. Now, again, this talk isn't about my coaching program. If you want information on that, you can ask me and we can get on a quick call. I make it so easy. I literally make it where you jump on a 10 minute call. If we talk, we talk about where you're at, what you're struggling with, what you're trying to achieve, where your obstacles are, if it's a good fit. And then if we do, we go and have another conversation at that pretty straightforward. But again, regardless, it could be not related to health and fitness, what that ever, whatever that looks like. My, my driving force right now, my encouragement is to, and I've put this as my mission right now, my vision that I have right now, not the golf stuff, not the, the spinning. Those are all things in the past moving forward. My vision is to help over a thousand people. Last year, in through my coaching program, I've helped close to 300. It was around 300, give or take, and then maybe some side on the side, some others, and it might have been over that number. So I, I, I estimated it to be about 300 according to my calculations. That turned into... 300 and then I was talking with my coach now here's my driving force I have a coach that's helping me drive where I want to go I'm just not trying to figure it out on my own the reality is if I want to get to another level if I want to help more than 300 people this year if I want to do 600 my coach said why don't you go for a thousand why not 3,000 why don't you learn how to scale and that's actually why I'm in the coaching program I'm in so that I realize not that I could just make more money. Sure, I want to be financially okay and not worry about and weather through any kind of storm or virus or so forth. But more importantly, I know from my driving force back when I was a high school student, back when I was in college realizing that my purpose and my significance in this world was going to be helping others. Now, again, I think we all do to some extent, right? I think we're all gifted to help others. Maybe you're an accountant and you're financially and you know that and you're able to and you're really gifted in that and you're able to. Maybe you're a pastor and you're able to 
to pastor others that are coming to know God. Maybe it's in the, maybe you own a farm and you have, you know, farm animals and maybe you have a dairy. I say farm because my grandfather was a farmer and maybe you have vegetables and fruits and you know how to farm well and you're able to provide value by providing good whole foods to your customers. Maybe it's in entertainment. Maybe you're a comedian and you're able to do that and there's a driving force for you to put a smile on people's faces because you know what, right now, here's the thing, do you know that one of the biggest things you can do to help with this whole coronavirus is smile do you know that actually that stirs up chemicals and endorphins in your body that can make you happier and not depressed so instead of watching doom and gloom maybe instead of watching the netflix it's funny because we watched some shows that were like like more like uh it was kind of like the crime shows and i was like honey i can't watch this anymore it's kind of like ah you know it's it's interesting but at the same time it's not encouraging it's not putting a smile on my face and i'm like oh why do i not feel good after this? sure at the end of the story there's a good usually the the hero always wins but the point is is that it wasn't doing me any good that wasn't driving me anymore so we had to put a kibosh to that netflix uh, it was uh, actually, and it was actually a pretty good show, but, and I'm not going to get into that. So anyway, what's driving you? That's kind of my, my take home today for the encouragement. If something, I'm sure there's something driving you right now, whatever that is, I encourage you to not just try to figure it out on your own. If it's your health, maybe you need to reach out to me. Maybe it's in another new direction with your your business. Maybe it's in being able to learn how to pivot. Maybe it's with you in your parenting, where you're at right now in your season. Maybe you're struggling like every parent right now is struggling with kids at home. It's, it's tough. It's like, it's not tough. My son is, he's driving. He got a ticket yesterday. His first ticket ever. He parked in a spot he shouldn't have parked and he came home I'm like, how do I, and it wasn't really a legit ticket. So far, part of me is mad that he got the ticket for him. And part of me is mad that somebody gave him the ticket just with what's going on now and the circumstances. So again, that can upset me or again, the driving force, again, whether it's trying to be a better parent. So I want to share this with you. So this is something now, again, I like to share a bit of my faith. It's just who I am. Again, you don't have to have faith to listen to me. You can maybe be encouraged by it. It's in Proverbs 16, 9. It's actually a really great verse. And I'll tell you, one of the driving forces between knowing what I am doing right now and knowing the potential impact that I can have on others, more of an impact on more people that are out there that need help, that need health and need fitness help and need help understanding their bodies and learning how to lose weight properly without crazy diets, without long, intense workouts. Look right now, and I know a lot of people are struggling. You put, I can't wait to get back to the gym. Well, what if, let's just say, what if you don't get access to the gym for another month or two? <gasps> Well, well, here, you have to pivot. You're going to have to learn how to do workouts at home. I know I, I'm encouraged by some of my colleagues who have gyms and they're making, they're making ways for their clients. They're shifting, they're pivoting out of a necessity. Maybe you need to pivot out of necessity. Maybe your health is, to the, is in the toilet right now and maybe it's time for you to pivot and start investing in maybe not so much your kids' activities, maybe investing not so much in all of the fancy clothes and, and you can in the dinners. You're probably saving enough right now from not going out to eat and spending all the money on the wines and the, the steak dinners and all that. You could probably easily hire me to get you on the right path so that way when you go back to going to the restaurants, you're able to do so and enjoy life and not worry about putting on extra weight. Doesn't that sound enticing? So listen, that was the, the first verse is Proverbs 16, 9. It's the heart of a man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. And it's it's something for me in a believer and in, in a follower of Jesus. I believe in Jesus and I did, did say the J word right now. And I'm not just talking about knowing who God is is having the relationship with God and that relationship being through having a relationship with Jesus. And that's pretty much the, the bridge there. And again, not to go on a whole sermon, but just to say is that one of the things that I write down in my daily affirmations, and if I talked about affirmations the other day, but is, is I let the Lord establish my steps. Now, sometimes I like to step to this, this way and I like to step that way. And sometimes I don't want him to take over because I feel sometimes he's putting me through challenges and struggles on purpose. There's a, uh, and I can't, I don't have that right now. It was something I read. I believe it's in James. I think it's in James and, uh, and talks about, um, um, trials. Oh, I'm not going to go there. Let me just share with you the other one. I'll save that for tomorrow, by the way. Uh, first Corinthians, I want to share this one because it's really good. Or do you not know as first Corinthians, uh, chapter six, 19 and 20. So 19, or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy spirit within you, whom you have from God, you are not your own. 
you were bought with a price, so glorify God in your body. And one of the things that I'm encouraged by this this verse, and again, I'm not going to get into it because you, again, you can go listen to your pastors for more of the theology behind it, um, is the temple. Like understanding that while I know keeping your health has value. It isn't the most important thing. It isn't the most important thing for me. In fact, again, I'm not too worried at this point in my life whether I have a chiseled six pack or if I have every line in my biceps bulging so I can take my shirt off of the beach. And I just don't want to have that dad bod, right? I mean, that's kind of where I'm at. Clients that come into my world, they just don't want to have the dad bod. They don't want to, even though mom jeans for the young people right now, for those teens are kind of in style, I guarantee you if you're in your 40s, you're thinking to yourself, there's no way in hell I want to put on mom jeans right now right can can you feel what I'm saying so even though scripturally just so you know that that the driving force in whatever you're trying to do there's a part of knowing the Holy Spirit and knowing the Holy Spirit and understanding that your body is a temple and there's value to that so know that even in your purpose is having a healthy body to go through your purpose in life and your significance is very valuable because think about it. if you can do whatever you do in life whatever your job is whatever your career is whatever your relationship status whatever your parenting level is at whether you're a parent maybe you have a stepchild maybe you are adopted a child maybe you are a new parent maybe you have college maybe you have grandchildren and the point is, is that when you take care of yourself physically, you take care of your personal health, there's a ripple effect because what you're doing is taking care of not just yourself, you're taking care of you and your ability to take care of others and to be there for others and to have this generational health that can change. I know some families that have had terrible past histories of uh, like poor health, obesity, you know, uh, addictions, all those types of things. There's that in my, and part of me feels like I'm a bit of the transition in my generation is I have, there's a family history, even though we grow up farms, there's, I have, there's some family history of a lot of junk, of obesity and of addictions and of suicide and all those things. There's a lot of that in my past that I have. And I know that I have the ability to take care of my health, take care of my physical health, my personal health, take care of my mental health. How do I do that? Well, for me, I lean into the Holy Spirit. I lean into God and he helps to direct my path. That's it. I mentioned that Proverbs 16, 9, the heart of a man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. The only way you can have the Lord establish your steps is by letting him. I mean, here's the thing. It's pretty simple. Here's the thing that I realized. Two things about faith. And again, I'm going to end it with that because I think it's really important in understanding what drives you is... The, the the biggest challenge, I think, for people when it comes to faith, there's lots of challenges, right? Is maybe you've been hurt by the church. Maybe you have no idea. Maybe you understand and just think that everybody goes to heaven and just everybody's good and all that stuff. And then, you know, on the side note, to that, how good do you have to be, right? Like at the end of the day, how good do you really have to be? Because to be honest with you, we're all not, there's a lot of not so good. At least I know for me, there's a lot of not so good. And my job is not to judge you. But I would say is, is the only, the two things that I realize is coming to this relationship with God and letting him help drive and establish my steps, right? Like allowing me to, to take a step, but looking at him, which way he wants me to take that step, right? Does that make sense? So in that two things. I realized I didn't have to have it all put together. In fact, I feel like I've met some of the, some of the, the people I've met in, in my faith walk that are Christians have the most jacked up lives ever, like all jacked up. And even some are still kind of jacked up. Hey, we don't get it all together just because we surrender our lives to Christ. In fact, what happens is we start to learn what he wants for our lives when you start to allow him to establish those steps. And that's what becomes the essence of faith is really believing in in what's not necessarily something you can see right away, but allowing him to establish your steps, like it says in Proverbs. And I would say that's one of the things is first, is not realizing you have to have it all put together. It's okay to not be okay. I said that in my testimony when I did, uh, after I got baptized, uh, I can't remember the exact date. And you think I would, should know that, right? There goes my memory. Um, but I would say is, is in that, is I didn't have to have all the answers. I just know that I start looking and start getting wisdom and start getting guidance by opening my Bible and looking into that. 
And then learning from other people who have walked with him longer, you know, starting to learn what that looks like. And you know what, as that starts to, as I start to open up my mind and let, just literally allow him into my life, it starts opening doorways of what's not just driving me, of allowing God to show me what his drive for me is, if that makes sense. So anyway, I'm just going to leave on that. So my encouragement to you today is to look at what drives you, like what What's truly driving you right now? You could be driving yourself right now to your living room couch, and you could be driving yourself right now to the kitchen and just eating all day long. You can be driving yourself to watch the news for the next three or four hours because you feel like you don't have anything else to do, or you could be driving yourself to not wake up and you see this message at 10 o'clock because you slept for 12 hours again because it's Tuesday and you don't really know what to do because everything's jacked up right now. Those can be your driving forces. They can keep you stuck. It can keep you not just stuck right now, but it can keep you in a bigger hole when we come out of this. And the bottom line is we're all going to come out of this. It's just right now, what's what's your purpose? What's your significance? What's driving you? And I'm going to encourage you based on what I share with you just in the last, now I know I went over 15 minutes. So my apologies, but Hey, you know what? I'm encouraged. I'm encouraged that a, I have people that are listening and watching right now. And I'm encouraged because God's he's, he's leaning on me to share what he has for, for my life. And he actually wants me to encourage others. Here's the bottom line. If you saw, you came out in early and that's that light was like shining on my face. The sunrise was peering over top of our fence here um, is one of the things that I know is, is if you are a believer, if you have faith, even if you're an encourager, if you're a fitness coach or you're, you know, some sort of a life coach or a leader is that be encouraged that, Hey, the only way you can lead is actually leading people, getting people that need leading. And just as we all need leading, right? We're all essentially kind of sheep. But I would say is with that is let the light shine on. You have to let the light in in order for you to be able to shine on others. So that's pretty much it. That's all I have. Now, listen, I can't help you in your finances. I probably can't help you in, you know, a lot of things that you may have if you're a, a doctor or maybe you're, um, you know, you're a worker. Maybe you're out of work right now. Maybe you're a school teacher. I can probably definitely say that I can't probably help you there. But I can say when it comes to your personal health, it's something that I've been walking. It's been my drive for the past 25 years. And I feel like I'm not looking to get back to the way things were. I'm not looking back to getting back to norm. I'm looking forward to the new normal that's ahead. I'm looking forward to the new opportunities, the people, the new people that come in and say, Mark, I need your help. I want your help. I'm serious about my health. I know I don't want to be on the, the list and I'm obese right now. I'm on the list of being susceptible to things like a coronavirus or things like diabetes or things like heart disease or things like cancer because I haven't been taking good care of myself. I'm ready for you to help me get through what I need to get through so that I can drive and be able to find my purpose, to find my significance and allow myself to be the best that I can, not just for me, but for my family and for the generations to come. So anyway, I hope this helps. I hope you're encouraged by all I ask. Here's the only thing I ask in return. If you have an interest, don't hesitate to reach out. Don't sit on the fence. Go ahead, send me a private message. We can get on a quick call, literally 10-minute call. We can talk about where you're at, like I said before, and then we can decide if my program is a good fit or not. And if not, I can probably point you in a good direction of somebody that can help you. have been around doing this for a while. Other than that, the other thing is to keep watching. Share. If you could share this with one person, if my encouragement is encouraging to you, chances are there's somebody else that hasn't heard this and can be encouraging to someone else. So all I ask in return is that you share this and then if you like it, come back in and listen to me tomorrow, 8 a.m. Eastern time. Hey, that's all I have. Take care and have a blessed day. We'll see you.